people right now. You know, we, we, and it's all based on us having our souls restored. Sometimes it's a challenge to understand that you may say, oh, I'm okay. But your mind and your will and your emotion may not be in line with where God really wants you to be. Now, the challenge for believers is that we have to learn how to really believe. Now, I know we say it based on what we think or where we think we are with the word. But in challenges, when, when, when controversial challenges of this nature come up, it kind of allows us to see what's really inside of us or really where we are. Sometimes the Bible, the Bible says that true gold has to be tried by the fire. I know sometimes we can talk the talk, but are we really walking the walk? Just to use that particular phrase or, or, or analogy. Now, we also made reference over to 3 John. And 3 John specifically, and I'm going to be placing a lot of emphasis towards that. It says, beloved, I wish above all things, 3 John you know, there's only one chapter there. Second verse, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou shalt prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Well, here's something that pinpoints it also. Because number one, our health, it really depends on how we're operating from a soulish realm. And from a soulish realm, it depends on where our mind, our will, our emotion really, really are. Now, we know one of the very factors concerning our emotion that can challenge our faith is fear. And we realize that the scripture says in Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Well, we may say we may be bold, but yet it's still, when fear shows up, faith is challenged. I've got to ask you this week, were there, was there any signs of fear was raising up as you begin to be comfortable with where you are, being home, not worried about, oh, do I have enough of this or enough of that, or should I get tested, or should I, should I watch who, who my, where my neighbor's going, or should I answer the front door? Well, see, all these factors, and, 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 and believe me, the Bible says to be wise as serpent, but gentle as dove, but yet it's still, fear cannot overwhelm or overtake our faith. Because once that comes in, a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump, scripture. I, I try to base this based on what's really happening. And to further that in 3 John, it says, I have no greater joy. Oh, let me, no, let me go back to the third verse. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. The truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest in the truth. Now, the challenge is, we don't always walk in the truth, brothers and sisters. we got to just kind of let's, let's, let's deal with that a little bit. But when the truth is in thee, the Bible said, once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Knowing it and walking in it are two different things. Two different things. Total analogies from that standpoint, because number one, when you put it in perspective, you may know the truth and still not walk in it. But the challenge is, it's the truth that will make you free. Why well, should be free? How can your faith operate? That just must live by faith. One of the greatest challenges that it goes on to say, it says, I have no greater joy in the fourth verse of 3 John. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Well, the challenge is, believers, our truth has been challenged based on where our faith really is in each and every one of our individual lives. Sometimes we may talk about the truth, but are we really living and walking in the truth? It says, Beloved, believe thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest, to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity, thy love, before the church, whom if thou, being forward on their journey, after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Well, we don't always demonstrate our light in this world of darkness. And, and, and to express that, one of the challenges that God may be trying to implement it's for us to really locate where we are and who we are in his word. 
Once you locate where you are and who you are in this word, you're really saying where you are and who you are with him. Because God in his word is one. And the thing about it, we're supposed to be disciples of that word. Now, a lot of the challenges that, that we're confronted with, they, 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 at this particular time, they're new. And, and we accept that. But once you know the truth, the truth will set you free no matter what new, and I'll put it this way, challenge coming to your life. We always use this expression, there are, only, there are no new tricks, only new players. And the enemy will always have new tricks trying to bring before believers. And the only reason he bring them in is because he has new players. But Jesus has defended it, has defeated it all. And we have to realize that in our life. That, that, there's a, a, a scripture that we all quote. And I want to take this over there because there was something that God was sharing with me this week. Over in the book of 2 Chronicles 7 chapter. And you all know this by heart. But I want you to just look at that. I want to start not with verse 14, but with verse 11. Second Chronicles, 7th chapter, beginning at verse 11. There, there, there are some things that, that, are, that are occurring in our lives right now. And, and, and one of the topics that I used for last week, is your soul prospering? Amen. Is your soul prospering? Now, this, these are the times that you can really see or really take inventory of where you really are. You see, having your soul to prosper will also dictate how well your soul is continuously prospering through challenges. But if your soul has never prospered, and when the challenges come, you can't expect to go forward when you haven't even arrived there yet. And this is one of the things, as believers, we must understand that our mind and our will and our emotion really has a lot to do with our walk in faith. The just must live by faith. No matter how things occur, you must realize that, that your faith not only will keep you whole, but it will make you whole. Every time Jesus healed someone and they came back to him to respond, he always, his response was, your faith has made you whole. If, if you are lacking in some areas, it's not based on God not providing. It's based on you not receiving. See, sometimes this has to come back home, and, and you have to realize that, that everything boils back down to you. Now, they're there in the verse, and I'm going to ask that you all put your phones on mute, please. It, it, he used this term, verse 11, <coughs> excuse me, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came to Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord and in his own house he prosperously affected. Now, Solomon was given a task to build God's house. It was a twofold challenge because in building the physical house, it was also a way of trying to establish how man must also build his spiritual house. Now, the challenge as believers, we'll focus more on uh, the physicality of what we understand rather than the spirituality of what we need. The Bible says that the just must live by faith, but it also says that true worship of God must worship him, fellowship with him, live with him in spirit and in truth. We all understand, based on Genesis alone, that man was created in God's image. And God's image, it began with, God was a spirit. Your spirit is so important to your faith walk with God. Once that's challenged, you can find out where you really are with the word. Because the word is spiritual. He used this term here now. Let me get on. He said, use this term. He says, in his own house, he prosperously affected. But it was based on him really building God's house the right way. He says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. 
whom, I, I, you know, we hear this saying, her always hear the term that obedience is better than sacrifice. But the challenge is that in being in this sacrificial state, what do we really give it up? I know that sometimes we say, well, I'm going to fast. Well, in your mind of fasting or your reason or your rationale for fasting, you're really saying that, oh, you know, I'm going to give up something to get something. Well, let me bring you to a new day. As a believer, your sacrificial life is 24-7. There's going to always be some things that your flesh want to do that your spirit man has to bring you back in check to reality. It's a continuous life of sacrificial offerings because you've given up yourself as being a living sacrifice. Sound like a scripture to me, doesn't it? Be ye not conformed, but be ye transformed to the renewal of your mind that you may prove. What have you proven lately through on this challenges that we're experiencing in this country or around the world today? Are you going to based on what the world's saying or are you going to based on what God's saying? Now, I understand that your faith will make you whole, but your faith will also keep you whole. But yet and still, you can't allow the fear to take you out of that faith realm. As, as Solomon began to build this house, God made, over, made the term over in the, third, in the 13th verse here in the seventh chapter of Second Chronicles. If I shut up heavens that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, he was saying that, you know, I want them to have a place of sanctuary, that they be in peace no matter what may come their way. This house I'm building is not only a physical house, but it's a spiritual house to represent who I am and who they are with me. It goes on, he says this, and this is the part we all know because we quote it a lot. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Yes. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayers that is made in this place, a physical place as well as a spiritual place, because it boils back down to individuality. The church yeah. building is the building that you're living in called your body. That's the real the church house right there. Yeah. But it's built based upon spiritual knowledge of what the word really possesses. Uh, uh, Rev, if, if, if Reverend Hay was on the line, one of the things that we used to appreciate when he was doing the teaching for us, that he'd always just speak about covenants. Covenants. God's covenant with man. Man's covenant back with God. Understanding that, that God's covenant was the master covenant. When God made the covenant, God was not a man that he should lie. God stuck to his covenant, but men have a different way of fulfilling the covenant that God had laid out before us right now. There's a tendency to acquiesce or, or back off or, or, or try to loosen it up a little bit to feed our individual needs based on the challenges that we may be experiencing at that moment. God's word changes not. He said he sent his word to heal as well as to deliver. That, that doesn't change. The ch what changes if you're receiving it or believing it. Mm. The challenge that believers don't always believe. Cut and dry. Come on, Come on, Pastor. He went on and he made the term. He says, for now I have chosen and sanctified the house. This is verse 16 that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually, continuously. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom. You know, we all have like a spiritual kingdom within ourselves. You may say, well, Pastor, what kind of kingdom do I have? Well, there's a scripture, and I want to just kind of want you to relate to this right here. It says that, oh, well, I, I want to put it in a, in a good way that we can all make sure we, we grasp it right now. Even though you're in the world, you're not of the world. Simplified. Even though you're in the world, you're not of the world. Now, 
another phrase for it in, in what we may call uh, a worldly terminology. If you are a diplomat from a foreign country, you got once you enter that country, you present your credentials. And that credentials letting that host country know that their laws do not apply to you. In other words, you, you come into a country where no matter what laws they possess or they have or are established, you have immunity from those laws. Now, as believers, we have really not, in a sense, in a whole sense, presented our diplomatic paper to this world. Not understanding that we have certain immunity that the world may have that we're immune from. Why? It's spiritual immunity. Even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. So that world that we're in cannot dictate how we're supposed to live and what we possess. Amen. Amen. The only way your credentials is to be presented if you understand that you have them. You won't present something you don't know you have. And yet and still, the word has given you that power. There's also a scripture that you, we quote all the time as believers that great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sounds good, but is it the truth? You see, once you know the truth, the truth is supposed to make you free and allows you to be free from certain things that will occur in this world. Oh, this is a time of challenges, brothers and sisters. But if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. He's making us as believers to lie down. And while we're lying down, we still have a roof over our head. We're still being fed. We're still receiving the essentials of life. So we're lying down in green pastures. All this is done to restore our soul. How? With him understanding not only who we are, but whose we are. The challenges of believers, your mind, your will, and your emotion. This is not the time to get discombobulated because of what the world is presenting. This is the time for you to stand firm. I, I used the terminology with one of our one of our members the other night. As, as a young boy, I used to remember uh, uh, before the city really grown here and before uh, urban development occurred, that there used to be a little creature during the springtime used to fly around called lightning bulbs. And we used to love trying to catch those. They used to be a, a light in a dark and dreary world. And we used to run those lightning bugs down. Well, I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, during this darkness right now that's occurring, not only in this country, but in the world, you're supposed to be the lightning bulb right now. Yes. yes. Jesus said he was the light of the world. We're supposed to be those yes. many lights right now. And, and in the time of darkness... That's when our light's supposed to really shine. That's when the world's supposed to be really drawn to what we have established in us. That's when they're supposed to see the prosperity of God's word emanating in those who believe. My question is, has your light been seen lately? When you walk in this world of darkness, do people be drawn to you based on the light that they see in you? Or have you allowed that light to diminish? Mm -hmm. It's going to take your faith to not only make you whole, but keep you whole. And, and, as, as Solomon and, and, and God was talking concerning this house, God made the statement over in verse 18 again. He said, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom. Let you know that when you really sit with me, where your kingdom, how much of my word is your kingdom, and how much of that kingdom really lives in your life. You know, it, it, it's bad to sit on a throne with no kingdom. Because the only person that has that throne is you. God rewards us by letting us not only sit on a, a throne, but have a kingdom to be associated with that throne. Mm. He used the term, it's according as I have covenant with David, thy father, saying, there should not yes. fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Talking about that spiritual energy, that spirituality. But if you turn away, verse 19, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Oh, we can get caught up in the world easily, can't we? We can forget about not only who we are, but who we are. We get so caught up in what the world system has brought before us that we forget that we have diplomatic immunity on both sides. 
that who God bless, no man can curse. But who God curse, no man can bless. We also have to understand that in these statues are statues. You know, and that when we think about principles from the term, and I use this thing, the PLE, we're the principals, P-A-L, that's supposed to be watching over these things and living in these things. As it used the term, but if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandment, verse 19, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then, verse 20, then will I pluck them by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight. And will make it to be a proverb ooh, and a byword among nations. You know, the worst thing we can have is for God to turn his back on us. All because yeah. we're not standing strong in his word. The Bible said when you've done all you can do, stand. Amen. That's all it say. The, the only fight you're supposed to fight. It's the good fight of faith. Not, not, not forgetting that if God is for you, who or what can be against you? Your, your challenge is not worrying about others. Your challenge is keeping yourself spiritually in line with God's word. Oh, brothers and sisters. So, I, I, I apologize because I, I knew we started late in this right here, but, but I want to get some basic. There's some other things that we're going to go about on next week, but I'm trying to keep this within line. But the just must live by faith. Yeah. And, and, and this particular this particular verse, and you can finish it out, and, we, and I'll go over it again on next Sunday. Understand that, and I'll use this, this word of terminology, that the spiritual ball is in your court. Either you believe in a trusting God or you're not. And the Bible says you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. When the question I come for, has or is your soul prospering? That's a valid question. Because it's going to determine the health. He said, I wish above all things you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion prospers. Is your soul prospering? 